Welcome everyone. In today's video, I wanted to take a look at the Arbitrum ecosystem. So if you're not familiar with Arbitrum, it's an Ethereum layer 2 optimistic rollup. So effectively, it means that you can do all of your DeFi, so doing swaps, uh, yield farming, that sort of thing, but with Ethereum level security, as well as paying, you know, like a tenth of the gas fees that you would regularly pay on Ethereum mainnet. So just taking a look here at l2fees.com, we can see that the fees for using Arbitrum are far cheaper. So 32 cents to send ETH and 45 cents to swap tokens versus the cost that you see here on Ethereum. So it is way cheaper to start transacting on Arbitrum versus Ethereum. And I think it makes sense to start moving assets over to Ethereum layer twos because whilst Ethereum might be cheap to transact on right now, is going to get a lot more expensive uh, in the future to the point where it won't be worth it to you to actually send your uh, smaller amounts of assets across because the fees on Ethereum layer one are going to be too much. So it makes sense to start transacting with Ethereum layer twos, getting familiar with them right now. And potentially you might get an airdrop in the future because uh, Optimism and Arbitrum, uh, they don't have tokens, neither does ZK Sync and it's likely that they will airdrop tokens to people in the future, although I'm not going to guarantee that for now. But I'm going to leave links in the description down below to all of the websites I take a look at. Um, there's this excellent website here, portal.arbitrum.one, and effectively it will just show you all of the dApps um, coming to Arbitrum or are already available. But in today's video, I'm just going to take a look at a select few. So first of all, um, you're probably going to want to actually bridge your funds over to Arbitrum. And so you can use the official Arbitrum bridge. Um, however, it might cost a little bit more money. Um, so you might actually want to use the official Arbitrum bridge, but say you're on like a different EVM network, then you can use Live Finance. Uh, this is a bridge aggregator, so it will tell you like the best places to go, how long it might take, the fees that you pay. So for example, um, say you're on Polygon and you want to move over 10 wrapped ETH over to Arbitrum, and it will show you here the different routes that you can take. So this route will take you ten. Uh, so this route will take you six minutes, and uh, you'll be bridging over nine point nine seven ETH. Whereas you can take this route here, and you can take nine point nine nine ETH, but it will take you twenty minutes instead. And of course, it will just show you the different routes here, and it will show you some of the more undesirable ones. For example, this one it will take you twenty one minutes, and it will cost most of your ETH. So you certainly wouldn't want to bother doing that. But live finance is really cool. Um, and I think that, you know, it's, it's a really great service to use if you don't want to um, look individually at each of the bridges, how long it might take and how much you're actually going to have to pay. So if you are on a non EVM chain, just bridge your assets over to an EVM one and then you can use live finance. Or if you're on a centralized exchange, I think Binance uh, FTX and OKX, they all support Arbitrum withdrawals. Uh, there are obviously going to be more out there, but those are the main ones that I know for sure support Arbitrum withdrawals. So uh, let's get into this and we'll take a look at DEXs first. So Uniswap, of course. So Uniswap V3, they're deployed to Arbitrum, so you can do your swaps here um, as well as provide liquidity. So when you're providing liquidity, you're providing it in a range. Um, if you're not familiar with Uniswap V3, then um, I'll leave uh, links in the description down below to some videos explaining what it is. But, you know, if you want to do swaps here, um, I think they're giving some of the best rates. So, you know, if you want to swap 100 ETH to USDC, um, you're getting pretty good rates here. Um, there are quite a few tokens that you can trade right now. A lot of them are meme tokens. Um, as you can see here, you won't recognize uh, uh, a lot of these, but you know, the Arbitrum ecosystem is still young. And so more DEX is going to come online, uh, more dApps and more tokens uh, as well. Now, the next decentralized exchange I wanted to talk about is uh, SushiSwap. So if you're not you know, super comfortable with supporting the VCs um, at Uniswap, then you can use SushiSwap instead. But just taking a look at the token swaps here, it seems like um, you're actually getting better prices trading at Uniswap versus SushiSwap. But, you know, it's up to you. SushiSwap doesn't currently support limit orders on Arbitrum right now. If we go to farms here as well, we can look at some of the different opportunities that you have here. We'll filter this by APR, and it seems like the Magic Wrapped ETH 
Um, Pear is doing really well. You can get 95.34% APR for doing so. And you're actually getting a lot of this rewards um, in magic tokens. So we can see here the reward APR is 89%, whereas the fee APR is quite low. Um, and you can just see all the different pairs that we have here on SushiSwap. Actually not a lot right now. But again, as I said before, the Arbitrum ecosystem is quite young. You've only been able to use Arbitrum on mainnet since August the 31st. And a lot of the key infrastructure that allows dApps to deploy hasn't deployed like until quite recently. So like Gnosis Safe, for example, is like a key. Uh, Multisig hasn't, hadn't deployed until like a couple of months ago. So a lot of dApps couldn't move to Arbitrum until then. Um, but we're going to see more and more stuff. Uh, start building on Arbitrum and now let's take a look at Balancer. So Balancer is a is a unique AMM. Effectively it allows you to uh, provide liquidity uh, for multiple different tokens versus like you know SushiSwap and Uniswap where they only allow you to provide liquidity for you know a pair of tokens. So if we we take a look here right you can provide liquidity for wrapped BTC, wrapped ETH and USDC here so that's you know a split pair here as well as provide liquidity for tokens um and it not be even so balancer wrapped eth so this is 60 40 split um and we have you know different splits here as well but just taking a look here are the aprs that you can get the wrapped eth vesta pool is paying out the most um and you're getting you know not great yields but decent enough for providing liquidity for DAI, USDC and USDT and one thing to note is that Balancer is currently doing liquidity mining rewards so if you provide liquidity uh, on Balancer you will be receiving Balancer tokens in return. So now let's take a look at perpetual future DEXs and some leverage trading ones and the first one we're going to take a look at is uh, GMX. So you can go long or short on ETH and you can also use a lot of leverage as well up to 30 times leverage. Uh, one thing important to note about GMX, they might have fixed this by now but uh, from my understanding they use a lagging oracle. So it means that they have to implement a rule in order to stop uh, GMX from getting you know arbed to death. So when you enter a trade, if price doesn't move at least 2% within the first 12 hours, um, you can't actually profit from that trade. That is my understanding of it. I think they might have fixed that by now, but it's just a quirky thing that GMX currently has. Um, and I think that's only applicable on Arbitrum. If you use this on Avalanche, you know, it will be fine, but it's just something weird that um, GMX has going on. And also we have here the earn page, which is quite interesting. So you can, you can buy GLP. So uh, effectively what GLP does, if I just click on here, um, if you purchase GLP tokens, you get to earn ETH fees from swaps and leverage trading. And so you can get, you know, 58% APR for, from doing so. Um, it will be 42% in terms of ETH. And then you're going to get es um, escrowed GMX and that's 16% of that APR as well. So that's pretty decent ETH yields. Um, but effectively, GLP is made up of like a, a few different assets. Ethereum, wrapped Bitcoin, Chainlink, Uniswap, and these five um, stable coins here as well. So this might be an attractive farming opportunity if you're looking to get yield right now. And now taking a look at our second DEX, this is Capital Finance. This is one of the uh, more sort of underground Perpetual Futures Dex is here on Arbitrum, but I, I think, you know, they're starting to gain more steam. So, yeah, it is Perpetual Futures, and you can go long or short here, and you can trade with up to 50 times leverage. Not that I recommend that you would do that, um, but this is really cool. And I think it's more suitable if you wanted to do day trading versus GMX, because GMX has that weird 12-hour rule. Uh, but currently right now you can trade ETH uh, or Bitcoin and they also have pools here where you can provide liquidity. So if you put ETH into this pool, they're currently projecting a 100% uh, plus APY for ETH that you put in here. And this pool uh, pays traders profits and receives their losses. So if you want to bet against you know the average trader, then it might make sense for you to um, actually start providing liquidity in this pool and for USDC you're getting 100% plus APY here as well so are uh, really not bad yields and something to definitely consider although I wouldn't consider this risk-free yields because of course you've got smart contract risk and 
obviously you also have the risk that um, traders actually start making money. So yeah. And now let's take a look at some lending and borrowing marketplaces here on Arbitrum. And the first one we're going to take a look at is 100 Finance. So 100 Finance, it's available on Arbitrum, but you know, a bunch of other different chains is here as well. Um, so from my understanding, it's a compound fork. And so you can deposit assets here and then borrow against them like your typical money market. Um, if you just take a look here. Yeah, like Arbitrum, ETH, Wrapped Bitcoin, Link, Spell, Dodo, Sushi. These are all the assets that you can deposit and all the assets that uh, you can borrow. And so, you know, it, it's not a permissionless money market like uh, like Rari Capital's Fuse, uh, but it's still cool and, and very useful. And you see here that the APRs are variable. So on the USDT, you can either get 7.6% APR and up to 18.01% APR. And so um, 100 Finance is employing a vote escrowed token model. So if you lock up your HND tokens um, and the longer you lock them up for, the higher the, your boosted APR is. If you lock up your tokens for the like max amount of time, you can get up to like a 2.5x boost on whatever assets you're, you're providing here so it's not on all of them it'll only be the ones here that you see um, a range of aprs that you can get so that's quite cool and the next protocol we wanted to take a look at is vesta finance so vesta finance is effectively the liquidity of arbitrum so you can deposit eth ren btc or geom and then mint a stable coin uh, against that so that's the vst stable coin that you have here and there are several ways of actually profiting from vesta finance so we have the stability pools so you can deposit um into the eth ren btc or geom pool and so the money that you deposit into these pools are used to liquidate people who are borrowing from vesta finance and they've actually become over leveraged um, additionally here if we go back to staking and then liquidity mining they've got a liquidity mining program going on right now so in the Vesta ETH pair you're getting like 70% APR as well as um, LPing in the VST Frax pool on Curve Finance and, and so on to our next protocol we're going to take a look at Greenwood Finance so Greenwood Finance is a borrowing aggregator so you can choose what assets that you want to deposit and what assets you want to borrow say for example you wanted to deposit 10 ETH and then borrow USDC against it so like 50% of your position it will tell you the best place to go and in fact it will do it for you so for example if you wanted to do that the best borrow rates that you're going to currently get is at we piggy and at 100 finance You'll get your, you're going to have to pay 4.72%, whereas WePiggy is giving you 1.74% um, borrow rate. And of course, you can just mess around with this. Say if you wanted to borrow Frax instead, it will probably give you somewhere different. So 100 Finance, well, you'll get a better borrow rate as well. And in fact, you don't have to go to 100 Finance yourself. You can just press borrow here and then Greenwood Finance will do the transactions for you. And of course, they're going to start uh, implementing more marketplaces in the future. And so a tool like this is really cool and I think should exist on every ecosystem. So Greenwood Finance, um, I'm a big fan of the concept of it. Now onto our last borrowing and lending uh, marketplace, we have Rari Capital. So Rari Capital have deployed Fuse onto Arbitrum and Fuse is I think one of the you know, most useful uh, products out there in DeFi. So Fuse allows people to create their own money markets. So you can have your own assets in a pool and you can choose what people can borrow against it at different rates and so on and so forth. Fuse right now, they have the verified pool. So these are like, you know, the Fuse approved ones where they have trusted community members uh, create their own pools. And then you have the unverified pools. So these are more of the, you know, more dodgy ones and are prone to exploits uh, as well. So, you know, if you're interested in using Fuse, then just make sure that um, you don't put a lot of money in. As you can see here on the pool risk scores, a lot of them will say unsafe or like FD. And these ones, you know, you're more likely to lose your money if you use them. But if we go to verify pools and we look at Tetranode's locker, uh, Tetranode is a, like a, a known ETH whale and he advises a lot of projects. So he's, you know, 
very much a trusted community member but effectively he set up his own pool here so you can uh, deposit various different assets and then borrow against them as well so you're getting like you know 8.93 percent apy if you deposit your usdc here and i think uh, rari capital's fuse is always one of the best places to go if you're looking for stablecoin yields so we've just covered lending and borrowing protocols now let's take a look at the stable swap so of course curve has deployed to arbitrum so we can see here uh, you can provide liquidity in their pools and you can do swaps between different stable coins uh, as well there's not much to do here on curve on arbitrum right now i mean the ecosystem is still new and so there isn't a plethora of stable coins you can trade uh, against each other right now and now let's take a look at saddle finance so this is a competitor to curve so you can obviously do stable swaps here as well but just taking a look if you wanted to you know swap usdc versus usdt i think yeah, you're getting better prices on Curve Finance right now. You know, you're getting about $2 better um, in positive slippage if you're using Curve versus Saddle Finance. So that's something to keep in mind. And now let's take a look at the Premier Options Protocol on Arbitrum, and that has to be uh, DOPEX. So DOPEX stands for Decentralized Options Exchange. So effectively what you can do here is you can deposit um, assets into these single staking options vaults and then earn yield upon them for example if you deposit eth into this um eth vault they will sell a covered call on that eth and then the options premium generated from selling that call is then returned to eth stakers and so they're projecting like a 17.22 percent apy on eth but as you can see here there are various different assets here that you can get yield on um, so that's a covered call. You're getting 17.22% APY on the puts. The APY is less. GO 908% APY. It's a pretty crazy yield. Um, and just taking a look here. So they're also deployed on BSC and Avalanche as well. But yeah, um, this is cool. And now the last step that I wanted to cover in this video, Yearn Finance. Yearn Finance recently deployed to Arbitrum. And so there isn't really much that you can do on it right now. Um, they took a while to deploy because Yearn Finance is a protocol that builds on top of other protocols in order to generate yield. And so they had to wait a while for, you know, the ecosystem to mature a bit for more dApps to deploy. Like I said before, um, key infrastructure wasn't there on Arbitrum for a lot of people to deploy, like Gnosis Safe. And so now that's deployed, a lot more dApps are going to come in as well. And we're going to see more uh, Yearn Finance strategy vaults start opening up um as well and so that's all the dApps that i wanted to individually cover here today and ones that i think that were quite important we are going to see more and more dApps coming along especially you know if they launch a token and a liquidity mining program then we're going to see uh basically everything start migrating over to arbitrum as well as some new protocols um as well i know for example Aave v3 is going to deploy to arbitrum they voted on that um about two months ago and that should be coming along shortly uh make a doubt as well and if you just take a look at this portal.arbitrum one page um it's just going to show you all the dApps that are live on arbitrum or are coming soon so if you just want to know what might be coming to arbitrum then definitely go to this page so as i said before i think it makes sense to set yourself up on these ethereum layer twos and see what's going on so thank you for watching i hope you learned something new today and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one